Hello and welcome to the Spiraling Higher podcast hosted by me, Sam, Mindset and Manifestation Coach. And me, Gina, your Biz and Mindset Coach. We're here to support you on your spiritual journey by bringing you intimate and raw conversations about healing, manifestation, consciousness, and spirituality. We hope this podcast makes you feel less alone as you become aware of your patterns and limiting beliefs to uplevel your life, manifest like a boss, and together, spiral higher. Oh my gosh. Yesterday was the best, wasn't it? Was it? incredible, especially being face-to-face with our people. I know. So yesterday, we hosted the Abundance and Money Live workshop, which was a three-hour workshop that intended to help people understand what the biggest blocks and illusions were to money. Mm -hmm. And Gina and I, obviously, if you've heard our Healing Money Trauma and Abundance episode, have gone through our ups and downs with money. We have really begun. I'm not going to say we fully mastered, but we have really (laughs) cracked the code. (laughs) We've really (laughs) begun to crack the code, though. And mm. I feel like I'm like deciphering it now for other people. And so it was really incredible yesterday to gather with part of our community, the people who have been listening, you all, and um, see the shifts happen in their faces. And in the chat, mm. I was like, this is my purpose. It was so cool because so many people have DM'd us and started conversations with us in messages. So it was really, really I loved being able to take that off DMs and getting to talk face to face and really getting into the nitty gritty. I know. We did some that spot coaching. That, mm-hmm. I love that part. Oh, I love that part. Yeah. And so we started off by showing a clip from a movie that really impacted me. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> was, was good. It was such a good clip, right? It was this clip about this father talking to his son, or rather the son was narrating this scene. And it was about, it was about how uh, my dad worked so many hours, but you know, at the end of the day, we never had enough money. And so the idea was that by working hard, as in many hours, you can't build wealth. And at the end of the clip, the dad says, George, money isn't real. It doesn't matter. It just seems like it does. Mm. And so we went into a deep dive that really sought to explain to people, money isn't real. And we asked, does that trigger you? Does that make you feel angry and upset? Because I remember when I first heard that, I was like, don't freaking tell me that money ain't real because I got to pay my bills, right? That was the response I had. And so we actually broke it down and actually explained to people how money is actually a belief system, not actually a real physical thing, that it doesn't have value in and of itself. It is the representation of value, which exists within our own human minds. And that the Mm -hmm. way to get more of it is to create something from within that has value that holds value that solves a problem and um gina went into so it was so awesome it was so good i really liked when we got to basically highlight what everyone's blocks were and i think a lot of people were saying oh my gosh i didn't even realize that these were my blocks Um, And I think one person was even wondering, how do I find my gifts to be able to start creating and being Mm -hmm. able to help people connect to what their gifts are? That was also really beautiful. And we also normalize for everyone, too, that like you're not supposed to know this because no one taught you. Yes. Right. And so honestly, I remember leaving the workshop and I was chatting with you and I was saying, I wish I could have watched this like five years ago. I honestly felt I felt so blessed for the people who were there because I thought you guys are so far ahead of anyone in your in your circles because this information is I swear it's it's like shrouded. Mm -hmm. I I don't know how I even collected all this information. It's just been like experience through experience meeting people finding the right books like just I don't know. It's it's a huge compilation of information when you really think about it and also personal direct experience, right? Like you had to do your shadow work around money when you lost your money. And so, yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, even shadow work when I had a lot of money mm-hmm. because that brings up a whole other layer of things too. So I think, yeah, the conversation definitely, I think, lit up in a lot of people's minds and in their um, awareness. And I think the biggest thing I got was just how safe everybody felt to share truthfully where they're at with their money story because we don't get to talk about that openly. You are honestly the first person I ever told all of it to. I know. I would tell Because there was so much shame. There's so much shame. With other people, I would just say, yeah, like we're in a bit of debt, but like it's fine. It's fine. Um, Right. You kind of had to pad what you talked about around money with this extra, I guess, layer to protect your image. 
Mm -hmm. the way that they viewed you and you don't want them to almost feel pity for you or think that you're bad with money. It's it's all the shame and the stories. And so I was being very protective, I guess, of the ego. Um, right. Anytime I would talk about money, but with you, it was really the first time that I could let those walls come down. And it was so healing for me because I allowed myself then to see it truthfully. Yeah, because when we're lying about it and not doing the shadow work and trying to protect the ego, we can't do anything about it. And so yeah. one of the things we actually acknowledged for all the members who came was that this is such an important moment in your life because everything that's led you up to this point, it's over now. Now you're here learning. Yes. Now you're here expanding, right? And it takes courage to admit to oneself that I don't know everything. Like, mm -hmm. I'm literally willing to exchange my monies, right, for something <laughs> valuable so that I can learn. And it took us a really long time to get to a point where we were willing to literally even just admit to ourselves, like, I don't know what goes on with money. Like, I remember for you, you were actually generating money, but every year you were like, where did it go? Yeah. Like, how do, where did it go? I mean, I remember you asked in the workshop too, do you know how much you need just to survive? And so many people don't. And that was me. I, two people I had, raised their hand. I literally know. two people. And I was the same way literally until six months ago. Literally until six <laughs> I know, months I ago. That. I did not know how much money I needed each month. And that was, I told them it's like root chakra shit, like being able to feel safe and know what you need. Because someone asked us about like income goals. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. we had a varied sort of answer to that depending on what your intentions are. But you know, one of the goals is to obviously know that you can cover, you can cover your ass, right? Um, yeah, because how can you feel how can you feel safety with money if you don't even know how much you need? Then you're always thinking in your mind that you don't have enough because you don't even know how much you need. Like imagine mm -hmm. if you didn't know how much food you needed. Then you yeah. would always be trying to get as much food as you can, not realizing, oh, I actually have more than enough. Yeah. Right? hundred percent. hundred percent. And so, yeah, the workshop was just super transformative. Gina also led us through a breath work at the end that just mm. really a lot of breakthroughs. People were crying and just feeling like, wow, I really felt the energy of abundance because we talked about how money and abundance are not the same thing, right? Abundance mm. is within you. And if you cannot go within, you go without. Mm. And um, that, was that was a big, a big one. Yeah, that was a big one for the workshop. And so say it again. You, yeah. If you do not go within, you will always go without. Mm. And it's crazy because the journey of actually attracting more money is to recognize everything that is valuable within you. And yeah. it's a beautiful journey that you get to go on. And so if you missed the workshop or you enjoyed our money healing episode, there's so much integration in this call. And so we're actually offering this call as a replay that you can purchase and watch in your own time and you can keep it forever. And so we'll make sure to put the link to purchase that in the bio or in the show notes rather. Mm -hmm. and in our bio if you go to Instagram. But it's super transformative. It's super powerful. And um, yeah, it's. I really felt like totally different after the workshop. I thought, wow, this yeah. was my purpose. <laughs> I think it, it's just really important to feel seen and acknowledged, yeah. um, especially in the shame, because shame is such a lonely emotion. It is. You it's really a lie. feel like it's such a lie. And I think having that kind of Honestly, interaction with you where I could be open with it, share with you my fears, but also find compassion yeah. and love and forgiveness for myself because the way that you viewed it was so neutral. It didn't yeah. change the way that you saw me. It didn't yeah. change the way that you thought. I mean, obviously, I wasn't great with money before, but it didn't. you didn't make that a bad thing. And yeah. so I think that gave me permission to not make it a bad thing about me. Mm -hmm. Well, we also talked about the separation of self-worth from net worth and how mm -hmm. if you can't do that, then anything that happens in your bank account, you will make something, you will make that mean something about you. And that goes both ways, right? You talked about the shadow of having a lot of money, right? Like if you have a lot and you haven't separated your net worth from your self-worth, then you're going to think you're like top shit, top G, right? And yep. think you're better than other people, which is a lie. That's the illusion of separation. And then if it is still tied to your self-worth and you don't have any, then you feel worth and like mm -hmm. you don't deserve anything and like something's wrong with you and that you're bad. And so, you know, one of the things that really, obviously you all know because we have these conversations all the time, but what really allowed me to heal was to be able to honestly and shamelessly and consciously share myself and my struggles with another person. 
Mm-hmm. And obviously, Gina, that's you. <laughs> if you didn't already know. I'm and like, who is she talking about? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's why we've realized the powerful and transformative need for community because these shifts do not happen in secrecy, in secrecy and silence. They just don't. I mean, they I just would, really can't because you can't. just kind of get lost in your own storm. Yes. It's like you can't, you and I both can't go far as, as far down as we could go because yes. you you stop it. You're like, nope, nope. Like we we catch ourselves like in the act. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, when I see my dog peeing on the rug or something, it's like I pick him up, right? I don't just <laughs> watch him pee, right? But if I'm not there, then he just fully pees, right? But if I can catch it, then it's like, okay, like we're, we're stopping this train, right? Mm. And so being able to have someone as a conscious mirror for me has been literally the most impactful part of my journey. I don't think I would be where I am. And Gina, I think I can speak for you too, that you would There's not no be. There's no way. No way. There's no way. And the most unfortunate thing about people going on a conscious journey or on their spiritual awakening is that they feel the most alone because now everything that they thought they knew, you know, the people in their circles, it's not reflecting the new version of them. It almost holds them back too because to grow and expand might mean to even leave behind some relationships. I know you had to go through that journey. Yep. And that is and, difficult. And even setting new boundaries for the existing relationships, like with oh, your yeah. family members, um, you know, all of those, that type of stuff too was very, very, um, I think, surprising for me in the moment. But then not surprising because you kind of realize, okay, now my life is not really reflecting what I want. So you go to make these changes, but you've been with these people for so long. So sometimes it's just, maybe surprising isn't the right word, but um, I think it, a lot of but us- it is. I guess it is. Um, But I think a lot of us, you know, when you go on this journey, um, that is, like you said, why you can feel so alone. Because if you don't have the other people around you that speak that same language. And I remember even using that word with you, um, taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used that word for the first time with my husband when we were talking and his his definition of responsibility, he was he was hearing blame. Which is so not when the I same. Said, take responsibility, he thought take the blame. And so that was one of the first times where I was like, oh, I'm using all of this dialogue with Sam. And when I say that she can hear what I mean, but when I bring that to my husband, he has a totally different dictionary. And yes. so I think that was maybe the surprising and confusing part um, because you do kind of feel Like, does anybody understand what the hell I'm talking about? (laughs) Right. Well, that's the thing. That's the odd thing about going through an awakening is you feel so alone. But the thing that I have been able to realize is, wait, there's a ton of people actually going through this at the same time, right? I just haven't found them yet because I haven't authentically begun to share this part of me because it hasn't been safe to because the community that I've been growing up in or the relationships I have so far, they reflected this version of me that maybe was less authentic. I was wearing a mask and now that I'm taking it off, it's kind of like, well, who's like, how am I going to find these people? But mm. as soon as you begin to authentically claim who you really are, then those people can really find you. It's like you're a flashlight. And so mm. one of the most um, important intentions that we have for this podcast and we have that we've always had was we want people to find like-minded people yeah. and be able to have these conversations on their own, right? And so we have these conversations together. And it's so beautiful that we've been able, been able to open up that space but by way of the workshop. And we have mm-hmm. so many more intentions to do calls like that every month, which is why we created the free Spiraling Higher community. 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 Where all of the spiralers can come together. Yeah. And we are so stoked because after the Abundance Workshop, we invited the attendees. They were the first members to join. And um, we just asked them to share their biggest breakthroughs because we want to keep the conversation going, right? Mm-hmm. Part of why Gina and I have been able to heal through so many things is because we continue to address everything we're spiraling through, right? It's yeah. it's a constant journey, a constant evolution. And so what we feared, I suppose, I don't even know if that's the right word, but what we feared was that you would listen to these episodes or come to a workshop and then just kind of stop there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's not enough, actually, to just have a realization. You need integration. You need mm-hmm. Awareness support. is not enough. 
Yes, we just had that realization this past week. Like awareness is not enough. It's not enough to know a pattern, which reminds me, one of my favorite memes I've seen so far. Did you see what I posted on my story? What? What it said it? therapist. It said, ah, yes, you've realized the childhood trauma that has manifested into your toxic behavior. And then it's Natalie Portman in the next uh, frame that's like, <laughs> okay, so now that I've realized it, I'll stop doing it, right? And then there's like a pause and it's like, <laughs> Right? <laughs> and it made me just cry laughing because I thought that by recognizing everything that I would just immediately change. Yeah. Like, I'm just I'm just not going to yell anymore. I'm not going to get afraid anymore. I'm not going to freak out. Right? Or like you with your daughter. It's like, I'm not going to get upset. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But Or awareness. with money. Like, now that I know about abundance, like, now I'm going to be really smart with money. And yeah, I now I'm going to be ready. Triggers. And it's like, no, no, they will keep happening. <laughs> They will literally keep happening. And so if awareness is not enough, then what else do we need as support? What other mm. tools do we need? And mm -hmm. I have found that the number one thing is conscious community and yeah. relationships and conversations. Because if I can't talk this shit out and I stay in secrecy, shame, and silence, I just keep perpetuating the same things. Also, because if you think of yourself in a maze, like you can't, you can't see what someone else can see from a bird's eye view, mm. right? And that's how it feels like when we're in this chaotic state of mind, when we're stuck in our structured mind and we're just stuck in this story. And I I've witnessed you and I know you've witnessed me where you're just going in circles in the maze or I'm going in circles in the maze, but the other person can see like exactly where you're going. And I think having oh, yeah. that reflected back by you has been one of the most healing things because also the way that you reflect it back isn't the way that I've experienced it with other people. Because other people in our life have noticed the same thing, but maybe the delivery was a little bit different. And again, they're using different um, terminology. Uh, yes. So I think that with you and I, because we speak the same language, it's always received with love, especially because I, I trust fully in my body that there is safety there, that this is coming from love. And so I don't have a defensive mechanism protecting me from whatever comments that you have. Hey guys, it's Sam, and I'm quickly interrupting this amazing episode to give some love to our partner, Organifi, who has created the most magical, delicious formula that has been helping me on my hormone rebalancing journey. I was actually recently diagnosed with PMDD, and it's brought me so much clarity around the absolutely insane PMS symptoms I experience for almost two weeks every single month. If you are not familiar, then consider yourself lucky. But if you are a menstruating woman like me, you likely still experience anxiety, mood swings, bloating, and irritation for several days each month. And so because of my diagnosis, I've been building up my toolbox to reduce my discomfort and make that time of the month a little bit more comfortable. And in that toolbox is my new all-time favorite beverage using Organifi's Harmony Formula, which was specifically designed to support women's health with herbs and adaptogens like maca, chas tree berry, stinging nettle, turmeric, and ginger. I make it with my favorite oat milk and it tastes like the best hot chocolate of my life and it satisfies my deepest craving minus all the sugar with a super smooth finish. So you can try this formula or any of their amazing selections, such as their green juice at OrganifiShop.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I-S-H-O-P.com for 20% off using the code SAM, S-A-M. Whether you're looking to balance your hormones like me or looking for more energy or antioxidants, Organifi has an option for you. So head on over to OrganifiShop.com. And once again, you can use the code SAM for 20% off. So true. So true. There's safety, right? Yeah. Which kind of leads me into what I wanted to talk about today, which was about the conscious relationships mm -hmm. because, or how to have a conscious conversation, whether it be mm -hmm. with a friend or a partner, because in the conscious conversation, I don't make what you have to say mean something about me. And that is really difficult to do in relationships where we feel impacted by the actions and words of another. And so before we get into that way, I feel like we should rewind. If you want to join the community, you can. It's open to all. <laughs> it's free. I just, want, I just want to remember this because otherwise we'll forget and just keep going on this train. So you can join the community. You will use the link in the show notes and just create mm -hmm. an account. You can use it on your desktop or your, com or your app on the phone. And um, yeah, It's on the couple, Circle app. Yes. And we have Circle. a couple of different spaces in there that you can join. So they're all public spaces. Um, unless you were inside of the Abundance Workshop, then you are in a sacred space. And we will add you mm. to that space if you download the replay. But you will be able to introduce yourself, 
engage in podcast chatter, answer questions, but essentially just engage with people who are listening to the same content as you, going through the same experiences, people who can shamelessly share the difficult things they are going through so that they can move through secrecy and shame. Mm. And actually heal because that's the only way you're going to heal. If you hide your shit and you don't acknowledge it, awareness will not actually get you to the next level. Yeah, it really is about embodiment. And I think that's been so much reflected in our relationship is when I see you embody something, it's so healing for me to witness that. Mm. And um, I really believe you and I always have had very parallel journeys. And I feel like anytime I'm helping you through something, I also help myself because it reinforces One that awareness. 100%. It's kind of like teaching helps you learn. Yes. Right? Like when I teach someone, even during the workshop, I was reminding myself of a Me lot too. of these truths because yeah. I know these things. But as I was reteaching it, I was like, right, right. Yeah. And then you sent the stuff again that like triggered like memories within me that kind of strengthened them because right, like practices makes perfect, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that, yes, even if you're not going through something in the group, but you witness others going through something in the group and you want to add your insights or your experiences to that, even just by doing that, you relearn and reteach yourself that lesson, Mm -hmm. which is only going to help you expand. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe you guys will find your Sam or Gina in this community. (laughs) 100%. Yeah. My dream is that eventually, oh, we should actually create a space where it's like a list where you're from. Like yeah, find your best, yeah. find your bestie, like your local your, bestie, find your local bestie, right? Your local spiraler, your local spiraler. Yeah. I would hope that people actually are like, Hey, I live in whatever Texas and then you do too. And then you can find each other and become friends because in this day and age with so much technology and post COVID, it's, it's not even normal anymore to just like meet someone on the street and then ask to hang out. It's just totally, it's almost like socially inappropriate. I feel like to yeah. just. And there are people, I see people on TikTok say like, oh, when people talk to me in public and it's kind of like, what happened to just being open (laughs) to people talking to you in public and, you know, asking to see you again, right? It's almost like creepy, right? Which is weird because that's how we used to actually date. Like you and me and our partners met like in person. You met your husband crossing the street, right? But I feel like if you met him crossing the street in 2023, you'd be like, what? Like you never see each other again. Well, you're actually pretty good at that. I feel like every time you go somewhere, you're like, oh, I just met this random person. We're going for dinner. But that's because of where I'm from. I'm from Tennessee, where I think that's more common. I'm Mm. from the South. But as soon as I go to other places, further North, further West, I find that that's less common. I could be wrong. That could be a projection. But I'm just saying that if you were to meet someone inside of this group and then in person, it'd be like minus all the weirdness because you already speak the same language. You already know where you are on the journey. And that's just a huge blessing because I remember the first time I began to talk to Gina about money, relationships, like career. I just finally felt like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Mm. I'm not alone. And none of us are. But when we believe that we are, that's when we suffer the most. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. The level of understanding that we had on day one was pretty intense. I was like, this person sees me. It was actually so weird. I actually felt like I was looking into a literal mirror. I felt like I kept looking at myself. It was the <sighs> trippiest experience. I, I couldn't, do you remember? I couldn't look directly at you. It was like, I couldn't look at the sun. Literally. I, just, I couldn't look at you because every time I looked into your eyes, I felt this like I was looking at myself. Yes. yes. It literally felt like I, I'm seeing like I found you. me in, yeah. Oh my God. We haven't ever, even ever talked about that story on the pod before. No, and maybe, it's my favorite story. Maybe we should before we go into how we developed our conscious relationship. Let's do it. Oh my God, I'm so excited for this. I have been waiting <laughs> for this moment. Yeah. I mean, I Gina and I both have many wonderful, supportive, fulfilling relationships. I think that's very important We're very to lucky, note. yes. Yeah, and I, I would never rank them. They're all so important and beautiful in their own right. And all I need all of them. Yes. Um, but this particular one has helped me see myself the most fully I ever have. And you have seen literally best and worst. And I think that's very important. Yeah. Because if you're not not showing the worst, you're not being whole. 
right? It's the yin and the yang. It's the it's the dark and the light. If I can't show you that, then you can't fully know my light. And so you were the first person I really feel I was like, here is all of my disgusting, dirty baggage. Like here is my shameful human stuff. And all well, it you- started slowly because it was kind of like, here's a little piece of my shit. And yeah. you're like, I'm, I'm I like, love that. I'm like, well, here's another one. Well, you were and- like, mine looks like yours. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but anyways, Yes. Before we get into that, we should talk about how we manifested this relationship. Okay. Okay. So three years ago, or four years ago now, four, four years ago now, I was getting into real estate, mm-hmm. which you already had quite a significant career in. And I actually knew of you, sort of, because you were at the same brokerage that I was planning to join. And yeah. you were kind of like, I don't know, maybe this is a projection, but I felt like everyone knew you there. <laughs> like, I really felt like everyone knew you there. And Gina had a very prominent social media presence. So I definitely come across her profile and I just knew that she was a realtor in our area. And I actually remember thinking it'd be really cool if I could meet her and learn from her. But I didn't really take it beyond that because the belief I had that was blocking me from creating a relationship was, oh, she's probably too busy and wouldn't want to talk to me. So Mm -hmm. I just kind of let that go. And that was maybe like a month or two. And then... I ended up hiring a photographer to do my headshots for my business marketing and promotion. And uh, shout out to Marissa if you're listening to this. MJ photo. (laughs) Yeah. She actually just shot our last photo. So if you've been seeing some of our photos on our feed. From season two launch. Yeah. Yeah. She's incredible. But I remember meeting her and she like waved at me from like a little bit far away. And mm-hmm. then I started kind of going faster towards her and, you know, enthusiastically introduced myself. And within literally seconds, she didn't let me finish what I was saying. <laughs> she was like, oh my God, oh my God, you literally remind me exactly of my friend Gina. Like you are literally spitting image twin. <laughs> this is crazy. She's like, I feel like I'm having deja vu right now. And I'm like, who's Gina? And she was like, oh, she's actually a realtor too. And then I was like, oh, I think I know who you're talking about. And so anyways, she almost couldn't look at me the entire (laughs) shoot because she was, she had a very close relationship with you We're very close. Yeah, Marissa and I, she does all of my photo shoots. So by this point, her and I had been very good friends for years. And so she told me that it was also your mannerisms and the way that you talked, your cadence and just your energy in general. Yeah. So yeah, she was just weirded out the whole time. And I was like, well, I guess you'll have to introduce us at some point. But I didn't pursue that directly because I don't know. Once again, same limiting belief. Like, why would she want to meet up with me anyways? Which is so funny because I totally would have responded. I talk to new agents all the time who DM me. That's so true. Um, And I always meet up with, with them for coffee. But I love the way that this had to happen because I ended up meeting with Marissa for dinner, I think just days after your guys' shoot. And her and I don't hang out all the time. Um, You know, we maybe go to dinner a couple times a year. And so we just happened to be doing that. I sat down first and then she came in second. And same thing before she even sat down, she was like, just stop. And I was like, what? She's like, I met your twin. And I was like, what do you mean? Like someone that looks like me? She's like, no, I just literally met another you. And I was like, tell me her name. Tell me everything. (laughs) So we went to go creep your profile. And I was like, is she Korean? If she's Korean, I'm going to freak out. But I couldn't tell. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then and then Marissa was like, she really wants to meet you. Um, So I said, is it weird if I DM her? And something about just hearing how much she thought we were so similar, I just felt less knowing that we're going to be friends for a long time. I I hadn't even talked to you yet. I felt it as soon as I got the message from you. I DM'd you. What did I even say? I want to go back and we should try to find them because I think I just said, hey, this is super random. I'm with Marissa. Apparently, we're twins and we should meet. And you just instantly were so, like, you just matched my energy right away. I was like, this is my moment. (laughs) <laughs> this is, I was like, I'm going to manifest this friendship. I was like, this is it. This is my end. This is my window. I just I remember freaking like <laughs> went for it because I just thought, I don't know. I remember actually thinking we're going to be friends. Like before, no, I knew that. before we met, I thought we're going to be friends. We're going to be like BFFs. And I remember David, my husband being like, you don't even know if she likes you. And I'm like, she totally likes me. I can tell. It was just this really funny, like it felt like I was going on a date with a guy and like I met him I online. felt the same way. Actually, my partner was also, I told him how excited I was to go and meet you and how I think we're going to be good friends. And he was just the same thing. He's like, you haven't even met her yet. How do you know you're going to be friends? 
And I was like, you just? No. I just have a feeling, but I kept on feeling so insecure. Like, there's no way she feels what I'm feeling. And so anyways, <laughs> we met up for coffee. And I remember you walked in wearing a dress that I own. Yes, the white. Yeah, the white dress. And I was like, I have that. And we just hugged. And I just remember even when you were walking in, it was like time stopped. stopped. It just stopped. It was like one of those movie moments where everything was like, and then it was just us slow motion walking towards (laughs) each other. (laughs) No, but this is real. It's real. I can't can't explain how cosmic it was because it really… I honestly feel what we know now or what we say now about this experience is that it was literally our our souls being like, there you are. There like you there, are. there you are. Like if we were part of, you know, beyond 3D consciousness at some point, right? We were hanging out in the in the sky <laughs> and just being air or whatever, just be just being energy. And we were like, we're gonna go down there and I'm I'm, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. And when I do, I will make sure you know of it. And I feel that is what I felt in my body this like but what was so crazy was what I knew in my body was challenged immediately by my mind yes and by everybody around us well yeah the mind because the mind's like that doesn't make quote-unquote sense because it doesn't match the trajectory of my past experiences it doesn't meet my model or criteria for friendship which is like length rather than (laughs) connection right yeah I remember you told me once some friendships go longer not stronger and I thought oh that's so true right because I felt very close to you immediately immediately within the first few minutes to an hour I just thought I'm closer with this person than so many of the people I've known for five 10 15 years right but as soon as I went to explain that to people I remember telling my brother my partner um, another friend of mine they were like slow down like why don't you go on date two? Like, yeah, you don't even know this person. <laughs> you don't even. But I was like, I know this person. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was like a the heart knew, but the mind was still catching up because I felt like I really knew who you were. But then the rest of our following year was getting to know the old stuff. Like, yes. so where did where did you grow up and all this? Right, because normally mm. people learn that first and then deeply connect. Whereas we went the opposite way, where it was like, oh, we're deeply connected on the same wavelength. But now I need to know, like, where were you born and like, what's your brother's name? <laughs> <laughs> like, just, and you know what's funny is when we first met, I really, I think what we recognized in each other was that we do have a lot of similarities. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, there's actually been other realtors, other realtors where Sam will show up at an open house and they'll think she's me. Oh, yeah, that Remember happened too. Two or three years ago, someone was like, oh, hey, Gina. And I was like, not <laughs> Gina, but I get that all the time. And they were like, but oh, I'm so sorry. Person doesn't even know we're friends. It's really funny. Just energetically, we're both, I guess, very bubbly and very open. And, and so I think that I felt very similar. But then the more we got to know each other, the more <laughs> we realized, wow, we're like completely opposite. I know. I know. It's so funny because I felt like the first year of our relationship was discovering everything that made us so similar. Yeah. Right. It was our upbringing, right? The contextual background of being a Korean woman. and Especially um, growing up in a small town, predominantly Growing up in a small town. Yeah. Totally. Right. Those were things that I had never really had in common with other people. One other friend I, I share some of those commonalities with, but that was the thing that really propelled us in the beginning. But then what kind of made our bond even stronger was finding out all of the ways that we were so effing different. I mean, I really feel that we embody the fire and water elemental characteristics so perfectly. Yes, you're all the fire for anyone who doesn't know. And I'm all water. (laughs) All water. But they're both such powerful elements. And they bring Mm. such different flavors to the table, which is why, like, our partnership is really so, it's so contrastive, but it's so, mm, I don't know. It encapsulates, I think, the whole human experience. I think we always say that. Yeah. Um, But that's why it's been so helpful, too, because even in our relationships, you're my husband and I'm like, I'm your husband. Like, we're we're, we're very opposite even in our relationships. Like, the things that Sam, things that trigger Sam are the things that trigger my husband. And so it's been Mm -hmm. really helpful because I can help Sam see from her husband's perspective because she can see it through me and vice versa. Which has completely healed me because… I remember when you told me, like, no offense, but I would not want to be married to you (laughs) because those things are very triggering for me. And you're able to reflect back experiences that I don't distort 
Because mm. in, and we'll talk about conscious conversations, right? Because in a conversation where I'm unconscious, I'm distorting what someone else is saying, right? To mean yes. something negative about myself. But then when yeah. you were bringing me the perspective, which was very similar to his, but from your eyes and with your heart, I could see that that wasn't to offend me or hurt me or reject me, mm-hmm. but that you were having your own human experience of that phrase or action, whatever I was doing. And I could see fully like, oh, that's what's happening. Mm. Um, but yeah, back to us. We <laughs> back to us. <laughs> we originally, so we were both in real estate, and it was seemingly clear from day one that we were gonna work together. I mean, we, I remember the from day one, I was like, we're gonna work together. I, I was really waiting for someone at that time to partner with. And so she just fell out of the sky. Um, a girl from Tennessee. Yeah. And <laughs> like, how did that even happen? I remember, remember you went back home. Yeah. Right after we met. And I was so sad because I was like, I want to hang out with you. Every I was day. texting you the whole time. It was like we the just whole like. whole time. We were like You literally... were in your childhood bedroom too. And we were just on the phone. I know. The whole time. <laughs> That's such a beautiful then, memory actually. Oh, I loved that. And then you got back. And then yeah, pretty much from the very first client you had, I was like, this is what we're going to do. These are the photographers you're going to use. And I just started helping her right away. And we kind of from the day one decided that we were going to partner in real estate until we realized, no, we're not. (laughs) Well, okay. So I had just began my career and I wasn't always fully, I I think I knew in my heart a long time ago that this is not what I'm going to do like for my career. It's just what I'm doing right now. Right now. Yeah. And it definitely served me a lot because I learned a lot about entrepreneurship because running yeah. a real estate business is you're like a solopreneur until you, you know, grow a team if that's what you choose to do. But I had to learn a lot about, you know, managing my money and what it means to like literally like work on commissions, right? Mm-hmm. And to rely on myself rather than someone else. And so that is a paradigm shift for anyone who goes into entrepreneurship, right? To learn to rely on yourself. But um as I was growing, I remember meeting Gina, obviously, and she was a further along in her career. And so she offered me so much, so much support, so much wisdom. And um, obviously, we had such a close friendship that it just seemed so obvious that we would work together. And so we were, we had made a lot of decisions at that point. We were even thinking about getting a shared office and all of this. And you bought me the book, Work Wife. Remember? Oh, yeah. You're oh like, this is, you're like, this is really cheesy. And like, you were so listen. lame. But because we're going to be working together, I, I feel like we should read this book. And you, we got it for me in like audio format. So we would like listen to it and then call each other and reflect. But I remember as soon as we continued to take more serious steps into formulating an actual partnership and changing the branding and all of this, I started to notice a lot of resistance. Mm-hmm. And I and, felt that resistance so hard. And oh my gosh, it was... Looking back now, I could see exactly what was happening. I but know. because our relationship, we were like two to three months in. And <laughs> so I didn't I didn't know what this meant. Like now I know when you get avoidant, that's just one of your patterns. And I mm-hmm. get really clingy. And so again, we're so opposite where I thought Sam would be clinging right on to me too. But the more I clung, the more resistance I felt. And so yeah. it was really interesting uh, to experience because I was making up all these stories in my mind, but it really did create an opportunity for us to talk openly about it and better understand. Yeah. Well, that gave birth to our first conscious conversation about something that was contrastive, right? Because before we were having conscious conversations, but it was all like, yada, 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 blah, 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 like yes. all these similar things. And then finally, we were having this first moment of really you could just call it tension where yeah. we just we just felt the push and the pull and I was feeling uncomfortable. I knew I needed to say something, but I didn't know what to say yet. And you were feeling it, but you were like, is she gonna say something? <laughs> and so I remember I I called you and I said, okay, I feel like I need to like say something. And I feel like you already knew that I was gonna be saying something. Yeah. And essentially what I learned, not in that very moment, but just ca- kind of zooming out and moving forward was that I was feeling because Gina had put so much time and commitment energy into her real estate business already that it was almost like unfair for me to join her and that I couldn't rely on myself to guarantee that I'd be a long-term partner because I didn't know if I wanted to be in real estate long-term. And so I thought, this is not fair for you to rebrand your business, bring me in as like a 50-50 partner when I'm not even fully sure if this is what Mm -hmm. I want to do. And so I was feeling this resistance because I remember thinking, but if I commit, then I can't leave right? And then I'll let her down. And so I'd rather just be like not committed so that I can't cause those problems. And 
it was interesting when we had that conversation because I was able to, instead of saying like, you're making me feel really whatever, yeah. I, for the first time within my life with being able to see like, oh, this is like a pattern that I have and it's manifesting between us in this way. Yeah. And so when we're having a conscious relationship or a conversation, we are taking full responsibility for our part in this tension. Because mm -hmm. if there is tension, it is never due to one person right? Mm. There is a dynamic between you. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't just blame this on Gina. I wouldn't have been like, well, you know what? You're making me partner way too soon and this is stressing me out, yeah. right? That'd be unconscious. That'd be blame. That'd be attack. That'd be fear. But my consciousness was asking me to shed light on the fact that, no, this is a thing that's going on with you and Gina's just reflecting it because mm -hmm. you wouldn't be feeling it if it weren't this opportunity weren't coming up for you to see this pattern. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I remember that was the first time we thought like I remember you're like I really like the way we handled that. <laughs> remember? I did. I was like this is this is really good because it really became a template for conscious mm. conversations. Yeah. I remember thinking I had never had a difficult conversation with honestly anyone that went that well where it yeah. was received in truth. And I think, I think where you and I were able to really, um, I guess, succeed in this conversation was we looked at our shit, our stuff, our stories yes. from a neutral place where I could just witness and be aware of, okay, this is what's going on in me. I remember we would say things like, this is the story that I'm in. Yes. Versus this is how I feel, right? Because exactly. I could be aware of the fact that I know this is coming from a part, this is coming from a story, and it, it doesn't mean it's true, but this is honestly just how I feel. Right. And then you were able to receive that and then share your story because what usually happens in an argument is your hurt parts are fighting with the other person's hurt parts. And then you're kind of fighting for who gets to be more hurt and who gets to win. Yeah, Whereas, or whose story gets to be more correct. Yes. Whereas with us, we acknowledge that both are right. Yes. And we are there to bridge those two stories. Because yes. what happens in a conscious conversation is you, or prior to a conscious conversation, is you feel a feeling that's usually mm -hmm. uncomfortable. You could feel jealous. You could feel afraid. You could feel insecure. And your responsibility as a conscious being is to get curious about what story is leading me to have this feeling. Not how is Sam making me feel insecure? Yes. How is and Gina what did making Sam do? Right. To make me, to cause this reaction. Because a lot exactly. of times we say that it's like, well, I only said that because of what you did. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, well, you blah, blah, blah made me feel this. And so in a conscious relationship, no one makes you feel anything. Yeah. You, you interpret things that people do and say and make yourself feel that way. Yeah. And so you still have the freedom and validity to share that, but you do not get to blame the other person. And so mm. when Gina and I have conscious conversations, which by the way, they're not like lovey-dovey. They're, no, they're, they're like, quite okay. difficult. Yeah, they're like, okay, <laughs> I have to tell you something because we, <laughs> we have this list of twin commandments, which is that whenever we're feeling something, we have to tell the truth. We yeah. have to tell the truth. And the truth does not mean my story is right. The truth is this is how I feel because this is how I've interpreted things. Can you is, shed light? Exactly. And this is just what I'm experiencing in my body in the present moment. Exactly. And that's all that it is. And I think that's what's been so beautiful in our relationship is I can hear your story without creating a new one in my own mind. Yes. We actually listen to understand, not mm. to respond. That, that is, is so the key. difference. Because when you're talking to me and telling me something that's causing you a feeling that is uncomfortable, I really actually want to know how did you get here? How yes. did we get here? Yes. And how do we get out? Not how do I prove that you're wrong about that? Yeah. Like I didn't do that. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. Right. And so defensiveness is the first sign of unconsciousness. Yeah. And that doesn't mean never get defensive again, right? Just notice when you're doing that, mm. right? And even between us, we still sometimes do that. I feel like it's like the first 10 minutes of the conversation. Like <laughs> Totally. And and we will even name like, that's really triggering for me right now because of this, this, this. Yeah. And we'll even just name that. And yeah, honestly, it really has created that template for me because it's also bled into the other areas of my life and other relationships mm -hmm. because it's taught me, oh, this is what happens when I'm conscious in the conversation as well. And it's taught me how to not get roped into the other person's story, but definitely helpful that you you do the same. And also acknowledging that, yeah, it makes sense that when I bring this up, that Sam might have a reaction to this. I mm -hmm. fully expect that because your nervous system is reacting to something that my nervous system is saying, right? So we also are able to kind of separate 
the parts from the true essence of us. And I think that's right. why this works so well, because I know whatever is coming out of your mouth, whatever story that you're in, underneath all of that is really a deep desire for us to be connected. And it's coming from a place of love. And so it feels it continues to feel safe even when it's a difficult conversation, which right. I think when you don't have that safety, then of course your nervous system will, will be activated. You will become under the influence and then start reacting from a place of, I guess, fear. Right. Because in the unconscious mode of conflict, right, you are trying to protect yourself and defend yourself. So that's going to lead to the very common reactions, yelling and fighting. That's the yeah. fight. Flight, meaning avoidant. I'm not going to talk about this at all. I'm going to shut down. And then freeze, which is like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Right. It's And so we can only have a truly expansive, clarifying conversation when we come from the position that this person is not trying to hurt me or make me wrong or make me bad. Yeah. We are bringing this to each other for the purposes of literal growth mm -hmm. and to share honestly what I'm experiencing as a human being. And when there's love, I always want to know that, right? Mm. Even when it's something about me. But because we're conscious, we know it's never really about me. Yeah. And it's never really about you, right? Mm -hmm. You are the physical manifestation of what's going on within me. Mm -hmm. And this experience that we're having between us in the physical world is reflecting what's going on in my inner world. And so I know now that when I get insecure about like things with like our business, it actually usually reflects the state of consciousness I'm in. I'm like, oh, 100%. I'm feeling insecure right now, which is why I am interpreting this thing that she did mm -hmm. to be wrong or bad or, yeah. or inappropriate or something like that. And so I can truthfully bring that to you and you can truthfully bring that to me. And rather than me being totally defensive and trying to defend myself, which sometimes we still do, yeah. right? At the end of it all, we get to the point where we're like, oh, I see how that action could have triggered that response in you. But also you're seeing that like, but I do take responsibility for the story that I created about that. Yes. Yeah. It's been so Healing. amazing. We were both <laughs> sobbing yesterday. 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 Oh my God. I have not cried that hard in a while. I cried so much because I swear it is so true. And you obviously are a big proponent of this, but the contrast always leads to the most expansion. And so we, I wouldn't say we have them all the time because we speak with consciousness commonly. So there's not a lot of time and space for tension to develop, right? Mm -hmm. But it does because we're busy and we don't communicate every single little thing. And now we have a business, right? And yes. businesses, I know firsthand, um, just like kids, um, businesses are the biggest mirrors for all of your wounds. All of them. All of your wounds, all of your stories, all of your, um, just everything, all of your shadows. And so I think in going into business, really we're treating this honestly like a marriage because we're having yep. to have difficult conversations. We have different ideas of where we need to go and what we want to do. And so it has been a beautiful opportunity for us to have these conversations because before the pod, I mean, we did experience it in real estate, but after we decided not to partner there, all of our conversations were around basically situations with other people. Whereas now within this business, it's like you're the person on the other side of the the problem, quote unquote. And so being right. able to come to you again, like a marriage, it's almost like this is our kid and we're talking about our kids. So it has brought up a lot more opportunities for us to work on Ourselves. our shadows within <laughs> each other and within this relationship. And so I love it though, because it's led to so much expansion and such a yeah. deeper understanding of you and I think because now, you know, now we've known each other for years versus like two weeks, um, I know where the part is coming from. Like I can see it. And I know. you can see it in me like right away. Because now if she gets avoidant, I'm like, that's just her being avoidant. Yeah. Um, and, and so I know how to respond to that differently. Right. So I feel like we just have such a deeper knowing of how to respond to our parts. Yeah. And even in that conversation yesterday, that's actually what I pointed out. I was like, this is like our attachment styles being highlighted, but in business, because in business, mm -hmm. we're in a relationship. And so I said, in this 
particular instance, I'm acting particularly avoided and you're acting particularly anxious. But the point is not to blame you for being super anxious or to blame me for being super avoidant. It's like, oh, I can see how that action was perceived as avoidant. I actually do want to take steps to mend that. But you as the quote unquote anxious person in this particular scenario needs to also take responsibility for the way that you contracted and responded to that. And so they're in a conscious conversation. No one ever gets blamed for everything. Yeah. Both parties see their role in the creation of the tension or the quote unquote problem. Mm -hmm. And so if you are constantly fighting with someone, it's because there is trying, there's an energy of trying to prove that someone is more right than the other. Yes. That's what a conflict is. It's like, no, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Right. And you can't get anywhere with that paradigm. Well, because you're not even really listening. You're listening. You're not listening. Just to respond with your rebuttal. Exactly. And so the template that we have for our conversations, I begin with we're both right. Yes. I just need to see how she got to her right. And then she needs to see how I got to my right. And then how can we like bridge our rights to be more supportive to each other? Mm -hmm. And it has we get to really meet our needs in the moment, right? 100%. And I think we are learning to bridge both of our needs and we both get to win at the end of the day. And I think that's been the biggest, um, again, template, I guess, uh, to show me, oh, like this is what a conscious relationship can really feel like. And it's opened up a level of safety in my body to speak my truth. Because for Mm. me, speaking my truth is really, really, really difficult, especially if I feel like it might land not great with the other person. Right. And that's so, the people pleasing. hundred percent people pleasing and not wanting to rock the boat, always justifying, oh, they didn't mean it. And I'm just being stupid. And I really have done such a disservice to myself to really downplay my needs over and over in relationships. And so, yeah, it's been a beautiful, um, I think that's why we've both just healed so much in the past few years, because we yep. get to have somebody to witness the entire journey. Because there's nothing that I hide from you. And I think to be fully seen by somebody really unconditionally has been the greatest gift in giving me permission to love myself that way. Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. witnessing... You love me and accept me when I am literally believing that I'm the worst. And you've Mm -hmm. seen that now. Yeah. (laughs) A few times. Yeah. Where I'm just, I'm not being myself. I'm not acting. I'm not even acting from consciousness. I'm not, I'm not feeling open. I'm not. Yeah. There's so many different ways that I've shown up and you've just been like, I love that. (laughs) I accept that. And I'm like, how could you accept that? Divorce me as a friend. Like divorce me. me as a friend. And you're like, no. <laughs> like I remember the Starbucks day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am the biggest feeler. You guys know that. I love feeling my emotions. I love crying. I love getting mad, as mad as I want to be. I love feeling emotions. So I naturally thought, surely Sam's the same way. Like, she's exactly like yeah. me. And well, that's actually, actually, I want to talk about that because in the conscious conversations, there's no assumption that everyone thinks like you. Yes, that is so hard for me. That's though. so hard because we just make the assumption. We also make the assumption that all words mean the same thing to everyone. Yes. And that is just, you got to clarify that. Like, for example, when someone says, you're not being there for me. What do you mean? I'm always there for you. Okay, we need to define what there for you means. Yes. Because you're right. Because you think there for you is X, Y, Z. I think there for me means A, B, C. So well, even the word like right. committed. I want you to be committed. Mm. Well, what does being committed mean to you? How would I... What Show would my I commitment. be doing yeah, if I was committed in your mind? Because even yeah. that's a different definition for, for two different people. 100%. So yeah, I just want to go into that. But anyways, continue. Yeah, I just remember that Starbucks day and she was just did not want me to see her like that. And I was so confused and perplexed. But now I understand fully. You, you just had never really felt safe to show that side of you. I even don't to cry. yourself. I don't even cry to in yourself. front of people. Yeah, I don't no. even cry in front. I used to not even cry in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> which I'm like, what? Like, I remember anytime I would cry with my partner, which used to be so much further, like the periods of time between those were so far apart. It'd be like a year. And every time after, I would just be so like profusely apologetic. Mm-hmm. And He would never say like, yeah, you should be sorry. He was like, it's literally fine. Like you just got upset. But I was just, I had been so shamed and socialized to believe that emoting was wrong and bad. 
Yeah. And so I remember we had this date scheduled to meet at the coffee shop and do some work together. And I just was not like feeling, I just, I don't know. Like, and I just didn't even want to look at you. I didn't even want to tell you what I was going through. I just wanted to kind of go home so I could like hide. Cause that's what I do actually. Mm-hmm. And that's one of my patterns is, um, and she finally figured that out because I would just ignore for like several days. And she was like, what happened? Where did you go? Where are and, I'm you? Like, I'm, and I'm like, I'm fine now. Cause I would like kind of like lick my wounds in private. And um, now I show myself, but yeah, I was terrified to show you that I was experiencing a negative emotion, which really ended up mirroring for me, like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with myself in these emotions. And so yeah. the healing journey really accelerated after that. Mm-mm. That was such a beautiful day because you finally did let down your guard. And I finally got to see, oh, like you're just afraid of seeing this within yourself. You had such a lack of compassion for yourself. And that's really where we started to unpack even where that came from. And I think that's yeah. always the most beautiful thing too, because sometimes we can get into a downward spiral in a conversation with a friend. And sometimes the way that they show their support is by kind of continuing the downward spiral with you, where they just oh, yeah. keep on talking about how bad it is and that must suck so bad. And you kind of just keep on staying in it. And I think right. with you and I, that just doesn't happen. We allow this space to express the emotion, to let it all out. And I even tell you sometimes, because sometimes you go into the coaching mode and I'm like, I don't, I don't want You're that You're like, right vent now. first. Vent I'm like, first. let me just get it out. I just have to release the emotion and then I'm ready for that more conscious kind of talk down. And I think that's why it's always so healing to come to you with everything because it's always with the intention of uplifting it, right? Of of, of spiraling above it and to see it consciously, to see it with love. And I think that's where it has helped to reinforce that own pattern in me. Because a lot of times, I mean, you and I both do this where I'll be, if we're not on the phone, I'm like, what would Sam do? Her, I can hear your voice of what you would see. And I think after mm. so much repetition, it's helped me to adopt that view, right? Before when I would, you know, get mad at my daughter or do something that I felt a lot of shame about, Sam would reflect to me that I can self-forgive. Sam would reflect to me that I can still love myself. And so it wasn't, it was so foreign to me at first, right. but after so much repetition from you, now I can connect to that voice whether or not you're there, but obviously I want you there. And right. I think the same thing for you, for that self-compassion and loving yourself even when you have a perceived negative emotion. 100%. And this is also what happens in the coach coachy relationship too. Yeah. Because my clients end up starting to think like when they can't reach me directly sometimes, like, okay, what was Sam saying? It's like that's yeah. when you're accessing a more curious, objective perspective, right? Because yeah. any sort of healing that happens, I told, we talked about this at the, at the uh, retreat last year. When we heal, we don't change the events that happened. Mm. Like past is past. Like mm-hmm. that's gone now. Mm-hmm. We change the way we see the events that happened. Yes. And it changes how we feel. So therefore, we don't have to go into the past and right our wrongs or fix that event. Mm -hmm. We see it from a higher perspective. And so even in the present moment when we're experiencing something distressing, there is always another perspective. And that is what a conscious relationship really allows to be brought to the surface, right? Because Mm -hmm. when I come to you with my complaint, and sometimes that, like you said, I provide space to do that. And just like with you, when you come to me and you're like, I'm literally so mad, like I just need to get this out. I'm not like, well, I'm not gonna let you get that out and you didn't yeah. hear this. I do yeah. allow you to have that emotion, right? So in mm-hmm. conscious relationships, it's not that you never get upset. Your your emotion is valid. But once that emotion has passed, how can we get curious about the stories and the beliefs that caused it, mm-hmm. right? And so in our relationship, we meet each other with a lot of curiosity and just so much compassion. And like you said, we don't do the whole misery loves company thing. It's like, okay, like how did we create this, Mm. right? Which is also Mm -hmm. what happens inside of a coaching container. It's like you're allowed to have that feeling. Go ahead, cry, tap it out, scream, hit a pillow. But then now we can get curious about, okay, with the bird's eye view, right? What, what, what was I judging? What was I believing, mm-hmm. right? Who was I trying to make wrong? Mm-hmm. And um, when we can bring in that separate perspective, that's when the healing really happens. And so I always say, and it's an African proverb that's been uh, translated, but the healing happens in dialogue. It's suffering that happens in monologue. Mm. I love that quote. I say it probably on a daily basis. And it but really it's helps. So it's so true. And I mean... We've talked to so many of you as well, um, just in our DMs too, about how you've been looking for someone in your own life to be able to connect with and that 
I love that a lot of you also feel like we're your friends because <laughs> we are. We are. Um, totally. You're going to join our community and continue to have Please these conversations and, and heal with us. But we hope that by listening to this conversation, you learned a little bit more about, oh, this is what a conscious relationship looks like and how you address quote unquote problems, mm-hmm. right? There is no blame. There is no, I'm more right. You're wrong. You cause this. There is, oh, this is here right now. And it's an opportunity for me to look within myself and see what part of me got triggered. What does this feel like in the past? Because that's a good one you've been bringing up recently. Mm-hmm. Is you'll say, oh, this is reminding me of when, I don't know, this give an example. You gave a really um, good example recently. About you and me? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I shared this with you, but I do know that I was having definitely some um, recurring themes that happened to us during real estate. Because yeah. what it came up for me in real estate was I thought you didn't want to do real estate with me. I thought right. you didn't think I was good enough to partner with. I thought you were uncertain about me. And so into this, I think it was about the podcast, that those same stories were coming up. And so I was able to reflect that and say, oh, I think this is because my body is expecting the same result as last time or mm-hmm. is bringing up those same memories. And so, yeah, that was one example for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then I was able to say, that, no, it's not the same as last time. Or, But it's important to note for ourselves in a conscious relationship, like, oh, like this isn't even having to do with this thing. Like right it's now. Like, right. It's a projection that my body and my mind is having based on the past. Mm-hmm. And we have to take responsibility for that because otherwise the other person will be like, why are you freaking out right now? Right. But yeah. it's like my my body is. This memory is coming up. And also, so I will say that it does also require a lot of awareness because you would think that with <laughs> yeah. someone like Sam that I could just call her as soon as I'm pissed off and I just start talking to her. Like for me, it is really difficult to have these conversations. I tend to shrink because if the other person doesn't understand or if they're maybe misinterpreting what I'm saying, I kind of freeze where I, I, I want to make sure they're understanding me. They're not taking it the wrong way. And then I just kind of, yeah, I just kind of shrink. And so I think for me in the beginning, I really had to wait until I could kind of gather where I was. I wasn't in an unconscious, under the influence state. I was more out of the, you know, fight or flight nervous system state. I was kind of back to balance where then I could see clearer where I was and where my yeah. story was. And then I could bring it to you. And I think that was necessary in the beginning. I feel like now we're at a place, even the other day, I remember saying, this is how it's making me feel. Not saying that this is your fault. This is just what's coming up for me when we're having this conversation. And we were mm-hmm. able to kind of unpack that kind of on the spot, but again, with awareness, because I wasn't super activated. But in that's that moment. also practice. Right? Yes, like, exactly. That's practice. Like, and you, trust. Yeah. Like if you brought that to me a year ago, I'd be like, um, I feel like you're like blaming me a lot right now. Like, right. Yeah. I would like, yes. right. I'd be like, I feel like you're making, or I'd be like, I feel like you're making a big deal out of nothing. Yes. Actually, which was one of our conversations a yes. long time ago where yes. I'm a little bit more like, let's just worry about that when we have to. Yes. And, and that Gina's like, crazy. I know. And Gina's very much <laughs> like, we need to worry about it now so that we don't have to later. Yeah. And not, it's very important to see that neither of these are wrong, but right. both of us need to work on it so that we can create a bit more harmony. Like, I don't need to stay rooted and dig in my heels and say, like, well, no, like, you really need to stop freaking out about that. Like, that's really yeah. nothing. And she yeah. can't be like, you aren't freaking out about anything. You need to freak out more. We both need to address, oh, okay. So, like, when I do that, she thinks I don't freak out or I don't worry about anything. So, these are a couple ways that I can show that I am thinking ahead. And mm-hmm. then for Gina, there's a couple ways where I can mitigate my my future projections and worrying. So, mm-hmm. this, this will never be the work of just one of us because there's two. It takes mm-hmm. two to tango. Mm, it takes two to tango. And I think it's really beautiful in our conversations because we kind of start with the top layer and then while we're talking, we'll kind of oh, uncover, yeah. oh, like I think this is the story or the part that I'm in, especially <laughs> because you're reflecting your parts. And then I'm like, oh, I think, I don't know. It just keeps on kind of unpacking as, as yes. it's like two suitcases. Like you take Literally. out one thing, I'm taking out another. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about so many instances where either one of us will be like, I just got it. I just realized it. Like we're, <laughs> we're talking for like, sometimes up to an hour and we're like, okay, I just, I, I just got it. It's like the yeah. layer just got peeled back. And then we're yeah. like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's like, it. That's, that's it. it. And so we have to be willing to tread the water of discomfort, right? Because I can't get there 
if I'm not willing to feel discomfort. And one of my patterns is I kind of gaslight myself and I'll be like, this is really not a big deal. I shouldn't even like talk about this. Mm. But I actually was doing that for a couple, not even a couple weeks, a couple days maybe yeah, where like I yeah. wasn't bringing something right away. And then I remember the twin commandments yeah. and I was like, okay, I haven't fully figured this out yet, but that's also a mark of consciousness. Like I should yes. sit with myself and think like, what is this bringing up in me? I'm not just going to go call her up and be like, hey, this is what that's I'm thinking. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like I need to think about what I'm thinking. So I did that. But then I was kind of doing the self-gaslighting thing where I was like, you know what? Like, I, just, I don't think I think I'm going to a big deal. Like I don't even want to bring this up. This is like stupid. And then I was like, you know what? I feel like there, this, this is a growth opportunity and it always is. Right. So I'm like, I'm uncomfortable and I'm bringing this up. And there is normal amounts of tension when we're bringing up our two models of reality. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is engaging so that we can bridge those. And so that took several hours. And well, like, I remember you were going to leave me a voice note. And then you were like, I feel like this is going to come off more aggressive than I, it, it, yes. it, it, I'm meaning to. So you said this has to be a phone call. It has and to be. I so appreciated that because, and so again, it's just really awareness also of the other person. Now Sam knows me well enough to know how might I take that you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and just giving, I guess, more space in that scenario for us to be able to both be heard where yes, I could maybe express my side while you're expressing yours. And yeah. so and I think that was really helpful. I really appreciated you because you fully heard me and you were like, I get that. And then I was like, okay, so like, I'm not losing my mind. Like I'm not self-gaslighting, yeah. but then you were able to offer the reframe where it's like, but that is coming from this belief and story that you have. And you were basically able to offer me like counter evidence that I wasn't currently focused on, yeah. right? Remember, the healing is always going to be in a different perspective. So once yes. I was able to express mine and like calm myself and see that like you got it, you weren't denying it, you weren't mm -hmm. blaming me, you were like her. Totally got see it. it, yes. But it doesn't stop there. Like there's also me here, or you in this instance, that has another perspective on this. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to see that and then like a day passed and I was like, I feel completely fine now because like now we bridge those two gap those gaps, I guess, the gaps between our conversation. Yeah. And I think the gaps between our perception of reality. Yes. Right? Perception yes. is reality. So in Sam's yes. perception, that is yes. reality. What happened is reality. But then there's my perception of my reality too. And so exactly. when I get to share mine, you're like, oh, well, then that's why you did that. And then that's why I took this. And so in a conscious relationship, it sounds so obvious, but you really are two different people with yeah. two completely different perceptions. And so- And both are real. Both, both are happening. Are real. Both are happening. And so sometimes when I'm being blamed in other relationships, I'm like, well, perception is reality and you def definitely think I did wrong. So like, no wonder you are talking to me this way, right? Right. But when you enter a conscious relationship, the agreement and assumption is we will assume that both people are number one, doing their best. Yes. Number two, planning to grow together and bring this to each other for mm -hmm. the purposes of that growth mm -hmm. and honesty. And number three, I will respect this person's perception. Mm -hmm. And that's like, so basic, but is lost in so many relationships. Like, it's I'm not so going to respect do that. you because you are not agreeing with my perception of reality. And that is one of the paradigms of, I think, unconsciousness, or it represents the paradigm of unconsciousness. If I make you wrong, if I make you lesser than, because you don't agree with me. Yeah, I think that one of the biggest things I've learned from you is that you can let the other person have their story. Yes. You don't need to change it, nor can you change it. That's right. their story. And this has helped me in my marriage so much because so many of our and arguments with our used to be, oh my gosh, definitely with our parents. So, I mean, even with um, just with clients even, right? Like yeah. you understand that, oh, this is the story that they're in. And they get to have that. That is their perception. That's their reality. It's not my job to change their mind. It's not my job to fight my story with theirs or make them make their story wrong. Mm -hmm. Because you might not understand the person's story. You might think that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to make sense to you. It just has to make sense for them. And like what you said is, I just want to understand how that makes sense for you. Yes. And you said something about winning earlier, which I think is really important to circle back to because it's not winning if only one person wins. Yes. It's just not winning. So if like, if Gina brings something to me and the point is to like, essentially tell me that what I was perceiving is incorrect and she is right for all of these reasons. And now the conversation is over because she's now proven her point. That's not winning. We didn't mm. go together. Like she mm -hmm. just trumped me and then, right, got yeah. all of her feelings out, but then she didn't hear me. So then it's not 50-50. And so 
And that I just think, builds resentment. And uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, which by the way, that's so funny you just said that because I had a really, really expansive conversation with my masseuse this morning. And he was basically teaching me the meaning of different words. It was so weird because when I walked in, he said, enchanté. And I was like, that's weird. No one ever says that. <laughs> and he said, the reason I say that is because it means um, you bring me joy. It's oh, like I literally a meeting. That. And I was like, I love that. I'm going to start saying enchanté. Enchanté. Yeah, because it means like you bring you bring me joy. And he calls his wife an enchantress because she brings him joy. <laughs> Anyways. Can you start calling late, me that now? Yeah, my enchantress. <laughs> yes. Later in the conversation, we started talking about resentment. And he said resentment is from, the etymology is from France, which is like um, resentment, which means to re-feel. Right. Ooh. And I was like, whoa, that just changed things for me because resentment really is the constant refeeling of something yes. without resolving it. Right? Oh, it that's just, so good. And that's so good. That is yeah. really good because yeah. it keeps you in that emotion. Yes. You just literally are stuck in a cycle of refeeling over yes. and over and over. Yes. And so that's what happens if we don't enter a conscious conversation. You just refeel. Resentment, yeah. resentment. I'm like, <laughs> wow. It just blew my mind. I was like, that word makes sense now, right? Mm. Because I think you can know what a word means, but I felt, I felt it in my body. I was like, oh, that's what it means. That's like the you, embodiment of the word. Yeah, you re-feel yeah. it and then you don't move it. You don't mm. transform it or transmute it. And so that's yeah. been a blessing between I us think- is that I don't, I don't resent you ever. <laughs> Never. I never. never. I've never been mad at you like that, where I'm like, I can't believe she did that. Like, there's there's always a level of understanding, you know? And I think I think one of the most important things that we've been able to do, to do too, is also really be aware of our needs. Mm. And then also be aware of who gets to meet those needs. Because most of the time, it is yourself, right? Anything that I'm wanting from Sam, if it's validation or attention mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, it's like, really, am I have to be the one to give myself that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I you do. I'm not giving that to myself. So even if Sam were to give me all of that, I actually wouldn't even feel it because I need to receive it from myself first. Right. And then, you know, and then it was so beautiful in that last conversation because I kept saying what I needed to take responsibility for, but you were like, but... Like, we were almost having a responsibility battle. You're like, well, I'm going to take responsibility for this. Right, because I don't get to continue to act like an avoidant asshole just because you're taking <laughs> responsibility, right? Like, in, yeah. a con- in a conscious conversation or relationship, it's not just like, you're not just going to gaslight yourself into believing like, oh, I have to make all the changes. It's just yes. me. It's just me and my story. It's like, no, there are also steps that the other person can take to make that easier for you, right? Yes. It's not all like, oh, it's just me and my stories. That's a yeah. huge part of it. Yeah. And the part that you can largely control, mm-hmm. right? But a partner that wants to grow with you will acknowledge within themselves too, like, oh, I can see how that will come across that way. And I I would like to take steps to mitigate that as well. So that yeah. we're both doing the work. It's not just like, yeah, Gina, work on your stories. Totally. <laughs> like I also have to do things and same vice versa, yeah. right? It's not just like me self-gaslighting myself and saying like, oh, I just have to change the meaning of this. I need to change this belief. Gina can also be recognizing and aware of the fact that that story is being created and still say to me, yeah, but you know what? Like, I do also want to X, Y, Z as well. Like, thanks for mm-hmm. bringing that to my attention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's where it goes back to the needs being met. Like, I think because we can so openly share the needs, we both know how we can meet the needs. And I think we're both very clear. Like, I know what what's my responsibility and what's what's yours. I think yes. it's, it's pretty evident. And even if it wasn't, we would be able to work through the truth of that. And I think that's what it comes down to. For you and me, the baseline is truth and love. That's the baseline. Because when you bring needs to me, I don't hear I'm fucking up and I'm wrong and I'm a bad friend. I don't hear that story. What I hear is like my friend, like literally like my friend needs something. Like, and it makes me feel like compassionate. Sometimes there's defensiveness first. And I think that's a natural like pattern response. It's like when I was getting my massage today. It's because you love me so much, right? Yes, yeah. And it's funny, when I was getting my massage today, these parts of my body were like really tensing up. And I actually, and he said, okay, relax your hip. And I was like, oh, like why does my body do that? And he was like, if it didn't, you would be having a stroke right now. Like, right. he's like, your body's supposed to do that. And so if you notice that sort of reactive defensive response, like, that's not wrong or bad. That's just your body preparing for battle. A perceived threat. 
Yeah, a, per- a perceived threat. Yes. That perceived being the key, right? So yeah, yeah my body might kind of like get a little bit of cortisol going and I might feel like I want to defend myself, but then I get to notice that with consciousness. That's the beauty and the difference between humans and animals, right? Animals just mm-hmm. react. Mm-hmm. I was walking the other day in the park and I heard these animals just screeching. I was like, that's so weird. Humans don't just <laughs> scream in public the way these yeah. animals do. These animals are screaming in public and we don't do that, right? And so- I get to discern between what is a threat and what is a perceived threat. Mm. My body can't do that, but my consciousness can. Mm -hmm. And so even when my body gets like, you know, ready to kind of get rolling, I get to be like, no, this is just a conversation between me and Gina. It doesn't mean Mm. that I'm, I need to run away from this or like shut down or fight. Like she's just trying to bring me something. And so, yeah, there's a lot of, it's so helpful to know why the perceived threat is happening though, because I Mm. think that boils down to, oh, rejection of love, abandonment, yeah. or misunderstanding. Like for me, that's one of my my threats is like this person's not going to hear me or acknowledge me or or yeah, that lack of understanding, I guess. But really that boils down to lack of love, right? Or this feeling of guilt that I did something wrong to this person that I love. So it makes sense that there's defensiveness. So if Sam ever gets defensive, I, I fully expect that. It would be weird if she didn't, because like you said, it is just really a physiological, very normal evolutionary response to that type of situation. So again, having Mm. that awareness helps us to not attach a story to these very understandable emotions and reactions. Yes. So good. So, so good. Conscious conversations. And so I feel like it's also important to mention too that we wouldn't be able to grow in the way that we have if neither of us were conscious or only one of us was, which is why yes. we would love for you to find your conscious bestie or besties. Yes. Come be our besties. Join the community because it's almost like I imagine speaking the same language, right? Literally. Or different dialects. It's like yeah. things are going to be missed in translation if we don't speak the same dialect. And so that happens with some of my other relationships where I feel like half the time I have to explain what I meant by what I said. Mm. Whereas when you speak the same dialect or the same level of consciousness, the same vibration, you don't have to do that part. And so your conversations can carry you so much further. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So come converse with us. Converse with us on the same plane of consciousness. We're so excited to begin this and grow this and really just see where it takes us. But honestly, if it never grew, there's a good 30 people in there now that we'll have (laughs) conscious conversations with. So that's good enough for me. But if you want to join the free community, you can do that by creating an account. Um, The link is going to be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty, pretty soon, Gina and I are going to begin scheduling live calls and events inside of that container. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see inside of the platform when there are scheduled events. You can even like mark that you're attending. Um, You can engage in like Q&A there. So we're just super stoked to once again, start the dialogue between us and the community because I talk to Gina all the time. I don't, I don't need more FaceTime with her. (laughs) I want to talk with you guys. Really, this is the whole intention behind why we started this. Yeah. To, to build that community, to build that network of, of people, that circle of trust and understanding uh, and of being seen at the end of the day. So yes. we hope that this healing vibration can expand to all of you and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so that we can spiral, spiral higher. higher. <laughs> we oh had to gosh. do it. We had to do had it. To do it. Oh okay. We love you all and love we will you. chat with you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this honest conversation. We hope it brought you peace, clarity, and a little bit further along your spiritual journey. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to us if you left us a five-star rating and a review so we can bring you more conscious conversations, spiritual topics, and guests. And we lovingly invite you to join our free Spiraling Higher community by clicking the link in the show notes to continue this healing dialogue and share with us how this episode impacted you. Come on in, introduce yourself, and meet your conscious besties in a safe space for healing conversations between us and other like-minded people on their healing journey. Here's to spiraling higher.